SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Z Super Full Power Son Goku was released on the 26th of June as a regular release and retails for 35 100 yen or 35 US dollars. As with all figure arts I review, this is the Japanese release. However, I do believe Full Power Goku will also be shipping this month in the US as well. So here we are, another day, another Goku figure from Tamashi. And by now, I think it's something we've all come to expect. Goku is the bread and butter of the SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball line. And Tamashi will keep on pumping out new versions of Goku as long as the series continues to run, which is great. I'm always happy to see figures of Goku's new forms or even updates of transformations we already have. So with this release, it is technically the first time to get this form of Goku uh, as Tamashi have marketed him as Super Saiyan full power. Not to be mistaken for your standard Super Saiyan we got many, many years ago with the 1.0 body. This version of Goku is from the Cell games and is meant to represent the look Goku had during that story arc. A brighter orange gi with a deeper V cut in his upper torso. And of course a belt which is not tied up in the front, much like the Saiyan raised on Earth body. The only other times we've gotten this combination of upper torso and 2.0 legs was the Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Super Saiyan God was also very similar, except for the slimmer arms to give him a closer look to the source material. And Super Broly movie Super Saiyan Blue Goku, which was the same torso and legs, but different belt. However, the main attraction of this release, of course, is the brand new head sculpts and faces, which unfortunately has caught a lot of negative attention in terms of the face sculpts and the choice of hair color. On one side of the fence, we have fans who think the hair should be a much lighter yellow, almost white, much like how Goku and Gohan appeared in the anime during the days leading up to the Cell games. In that particular story arc, Goku and Gohan had figured out a way to stay in Super Saiyan whilst being in a natural relaxed state, meaning if they could make Super Saiyan their base form, uh, they could, you know, power up on top of that. And yes, during that time, Goku's hair was a much lighter yellow, almost white. However, when it actually came time to fight Cell, Goku of course charged up and that turned his hair color a darker yellow as we see here. So I think depending on the faces you use, either color could be accurate. But for me, the relaxed face looks a little better with the lighter shade of yellow and with the shouting or angry faces you could use with a brighter, more charged up yellow. So how do you solve this dilemma? Well, you buy two figures, paint one a lighter shade of yellow, and bam, you get the best of both worlds. But no matter which shade of yellow you prefer, for me, there is no denying the fact that the new hair sculpt is absolutely gorgeous. It's sharp and angular and really reminds me of what Dragon Ball used to look like in the good old Z days. The new sculpt really gives the hair a sense of depth, much like the uh, Bardock hair sculpt, and I'm so glad we didn't just get a repainted Super Saiyan blue head. Not to say that I don't like that head sculpt, it's a great look and looks fantastic as blue, but I like to have some kind of variation with each of Goku's transformations. So thank you Tamashi for not going the lazy route. Now to the controversial faces, and I know I'll get quite a few thumbs down for saying this, but this is my personal opinion, and you like what you like, but I really enjoy these new faces, especially the smiling face. If nothing else, I was most excited for this particular faceplate. Goku fights, that's what he does, he enjoys it, and that's what he does pretty much the whole series. But he's also a pretty happy-go-lucky character. That's his personality, and I think we don't get enough of the other side of Goku in figure form. The best faces we have ever gotten for Goku, in my opinion, is still the 1.0 base form Goku. Which again, I think people are probably going to disagree with me on this, but uh, I think they are much better than the Saiyan Rays on Earth faces. Anyway, going back to the full power faces, I like them, but I can definitely see why people don't. There is definitely a roundness, for lack of a better word to them, much like how some of the art was in Dragon Ball Z, but I think it's the way the faces 
uh, are sculpted and shaped that kind of throws it off. The best way I can describe it is that it's got kind of a one piece feel to it. It's kind of round and soft, uh, kind of cartoonish, if that makes any kind of sense, which isn't a bad thing, but it's definitely something different to what we're used to seeing uh, in this line. So do I wish they used the Super Saiyan blue faces instead? Nope, not at all. Again, I do like the new faces. They aren't perfect and I can see why people may not think too highly of them, but I am happy to get something new. I am happy to see Tamashi trying to give us something different. It's not always a hit, but they could have easily just repainted the Super Saiyan blue heads and faces and called it a day. For some, that might be enough, but for me, I want to see Tamashi keep pushing the envelope as much as they possibly can, even if it means that it doesn't meet everyone's personal expectations. In saying that, the face prints are on point, clean and sharp. I really like the almost indigo green they used for the eyes as well. So just before we jump into articulation, I just want to mention that uh, Goku actually comes packaged with his belt back to front. Uh, I have him here. The belt is actually on backwards. The front of the belt should be kind of curved, like so. And it's an easy fix because the belt is actually made from a softer, rubbery plastic. So you can just twist it at the waist to the front. And there we have it. All done. All right, so nothing new here. If you have any copy of the Goku 2.0 body, you know what we're dealing with. The head and the neck are independent joints, so Goku can move his head up this much. Let's get it to focus. He can bury his head down into his chest about that much. Left and right rotation and a bit of tilt as well. Goku does have butterfly joints. But unfortunately, the butterfly joints are colored a flesh tone and not blue or orange as they should be. It kind of breaks up the illusion of Goku actually wearing a gi, which is unfortunate, uh, but that's what Tamashi keeps doing. Uh, we have 360 rotation there at the shoulders. You can move these shoulder pieces out of the way to get Goku a bit less than 90 degrees. Upper bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, and of course you get hinges and swivels at the wrist. For the torso, the upper torso does have a bit of twist, but it is a little too tight for you to get you know any range. He does move his torso back that much and forward it's not great but there is a bit of movement there and of course we have swivel at the waist as well for the legs you can't do the full splits but uh it's not bad forward and back is much better You get the upper thigh cut, the double jointed knees, moving up at the boot, moving down at the boot, toe articulation, and uh, some pretty decent ankle tilt as well. We don't get too much in terms of accessories. It's kind of your bare bones, basic Goku hands. And of course, the new faces to accompany the new head sculpt. No energy effect, but for the price point, I'm definitely okay with that. All right, now to the fun part of the video. We're gonna try some body swaps and just to make things a little bit smoother, 
get things going a little bit quicker um, because we do have quite a few bodies to get through. I'm not going to attach the head directly to the peg. It's just going to slow things down. But all of the 2.0 bodies uh, you see here, uh, not all of them are 2.0 bodies. We have the 1.0 body here. But all the 2.0 Goku bodies uh, should fit this head with the exception of Super Saiyan Trunks here. The uh, ball peg is a little bit too big for this socket. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and try the first body, which is the 1.0 body. And I got a bit of blue tack here. I'm just going to attach it just to give you guys an idea of what it will look like. I really like the orange on this body. If I can get it to focus, and I think it looks pretty good. All right, next, next body. I was going to say head just now. And we have the Saiyan raised on Earth. And again, let's just pop that on. There we have Goku with the uh, the belt tied up at the front there. Not too bad. Next body, let's have a look at Ultra Instinct Mastered Goku. Shirtless Goku. And that works. I think that looks pretty good actually. All right. A slimmer body, we have the Super Saiyan God Goku. And I don't know, this this might work for your Dragon Ball Super display maybe. Or a uh, Dragon Ball Super manga display. Sorry, let's get that to focus. Yeah, the uh, lighter oranges, the lighter blues. Looks pretty good as well. And of course you have the... Uh, the kanji on the back there. The next body is the Ultra Instinct Omen or the blue shirt battle damage Goku. And I'm having a little bit of trouble. Why is that not going on? All right, there we go. All right. That looks pretty cool. I like that as well. And definitely something you can use for a lot of displays. Goku has fought many opponents with this particular look. I think it looks pretty awesome. All right. The next body is the Awakening Goku body. Which again is a very iconic look for Goku as well. Updated headpiece. You can use this for a Freezer Saga display. And last but not least, we have Trunks's Super Saiyan body. Oh, sorry, the Trunks Saiyan armor body. And of course, this is Goku's look in the uh, Room of Spirit and Time. The body seems a little bit slim, but uh, yeah, I think it works. Now all we need is a uh, smaller body type of the Saiyan armor, a smaller Saiyan armor body type, so we can have a uh, Goku training with Gohan. That would uh, look pretty damn cool, I think. But yeah, I think this works. And uh, I'll definitely be taking some photos with this head and body combination. This might not be the most exciting release, but I think anyone who's collecting this line should definitely have at least one in their collection. Why? Well, for starters, it's a great figure that uses a body we have all come to know and enjoy many times over by now. The heads may be a little different, but I think it's a great update to a great original figure, which also deserves a lot of recognition 
more on that later. At the price point, it's a great way for new collectors to ease into the line. Again, if you don't like the heads and faces, that's totally cool too. The 1.0 Super Saiyan Goku, I think, is still a fantastic figure and holds up way better than people give it credit for. The body might be a little dated in terms of articulation, but aesthetically, you're not going to get a figure this well painted with shading ever again. Not with the way the line is going now anyway. Just look at the beautiful paintwork on these figures, shading everywhere on the body, the gi, and the hands as well. They might be a little bit hard to come by now, but if you have the chance, I really do recommend picking up at least one of the 1.0 Gokus. The 1.0 base form Goku is still my go-to base form Goku to this day. As I mentioned before, it's one of the best Goku figures and has some of the best face plates to date. What I'm trying to say is that Full Power Goku is a great overall figure with some interesting updates, but if it's not your cup of tea, you definitely have options. If the 1.0 is a bit hard to come by, Possessed Horse Demoniacal Fit have a Super Saiyan headset based on the Super Saiyan Blue heads, uh, so if they're more to your liking, they are definitely an option. As much as I did enjoy this release, there are a few areas I definitely would like Tamashi to improve on in the future. One of the main gripes I've had with all recent Goku figures is the lack of any new kind of hands. We've got the same four or five sets of hands with every Goku release so far, but I really want to see Tamashi either update their hand sculpts or give us more options. Something similar to Super Saiyan Blue uh, Vegeta 1.0 figure, he had these open palm hands which were fantastic and never used again, or even a set of hands from the more recent Bardock figure. And that's it for this review of Super S and that's it for this review of Super Saiyan Full Power Goku. Thank you always for watching, you guys are the best. Subscribe if you haven't already. Likes and comments are always appreciated. I've got Figure Arts Dragon Ball Super Hit coming up very soon, so make sure you have your notifications turned on. Have a fantastic weekend. Have a fantastic weekend, everyone. Stay safe, keep healthy, and I'll be seeing you all very, very soon. Yoroshiku.